We begin tonight with breaking news. A few moments ago, we got word from Montreal County Sheriff Ken Halverson that the U.S. Air Force is reporting lost explosives. Now, this is happening four miles west of Partial, uh, south of Highway 23. What are these explosives exactly? We're told that it is a belt of linked grenades for Mark 19 automatic grenade launchers. Now we're gonna have a lot more on this breaking story coming up at six. Good evening, I'm Molly Martinez. Our other top story, we're learning two officers involved in the shooting death of Ryan Gipp have been cleared of any wrongdoing. The FBI met with the families and the Standing Rock Sioux Tribal Council today to share the news. The Bureau of Indian Affairs says Gipp was shot at Fort Yates at a gas station after officers say he walked over to them with his hands in his pocket and ignored commands to show his hands. He was rushed to the hospital where he later died. Unfortunately, things do happen. Um, it, it, and closure has come to this part of the, the case. And the tribe has known now as far as what has, um, has happened. Faith says they express their condolences to the family. We reached out to the family several times and did not hear back from them for comment. Time now is 5.01. Let's kick it over to Kevin for our first check on this very wet weather. A Bismarck woman was just charged as an accomplice in a 2015 murder of a Minnesota woman. Police say 38-year-old Crystal Herman will spend the next 20 years behind bars for her role in the death of 36-year-old Amanda Angst. Police say Herman admitted to helping kidnap Angst on the Spirit Lake Indian Reservation. Investigators say they think Angst was beaten with a shovel, wrapped in a tarp, tied to a cinder block, and dumped in the Cheyenne River, all while still alive. And a bizarre story out of Bismarck. A couple was arrested on May 5th after police found 575 Xanax pills and other drugs in their possession. It happened during a traffic stop. They say 43-year-old Christopher Martin and 38-year-old Tanya Zlupta told them they were canoeing along the Apple Creek when they found a treehouse. The couple says they went into the treehouse and grabbed three bags of Xanax, meth, marijuana, marijuana paraphernalia, a machete, and a sword. Deputies say during the stop, they found one gram of meth, two syringes, and one gram of marijuana, along with the bag of Xanax. Deputies were able to find the treehouse and the owner. The owner said he had a sword and a machete and Xanax pills stolen. Kelly Laban with the Burley County Sheriff's Department says the case is under investigation by the Metro Area Narcotics Tax Force and additional charges are likely. For a list of those charges, you can visit our website. Well, family and friends of a woman who disappeared from the Newtown area last October are reorganizing their efforts. Matthew Lone Bear, the brother of 32-year-old Olivia Lone Bear, says they will be organizing search camps from May 21st to June 22nd. The first one will be based out of the Four Bears Park in Newtown, but they will move around to the other parts of the reservation as well. Following a story we brought you yesterday, this morning that condemned cat trailer was hauled away from the Gateway Mobile Home Community in Mandan. This after the city deemed it uninhabitable. In transportation news, tomorrow people in Bismarck and Mandan will be able to hitch a ride in an autonomous vehicle at the event center. While an operator is present, they're not really at the helm. If someone steps in front of the bus, it stops itself. But we want our citizens to see it, explore it, touch it, feel it. You can read about it all you want, but until you sit in it and ride in it, uh, you don't really truly get an appreciation for the technology that we're looking at. So that's, that's a big part of what we're doing here today. The bus will be open to the public at the Transportation Expo tomorrow. A couple dozen volunteers got together today to transform a house into a more convenient home for a Lincoln woman and her son. Rebuilding Together is an initiative to help remodel the homes of people that can't afford it. Trudy and Lincoln bought this home five years ago, and three days after its purchase, her son was paralyzed from the waist down. It's been uh, such a gift. I am very overwhelmed that I was chosen and uh, that these modifications that really have, we've been needing for five years now are finally getting done. Workers spent the day widening doors, adding a ramp to the back porch, and making the bathroom more handicap accessible. Up in Minot, the 2018 Shrine Circus is taking over the town. Megan Von Baron joins us live from the rings with more. Megan? Yes, 
Several families from the local community are here taking in the Shrine Circus, although it's intermission right now. All the kids are downstairs getting face paint, getting balloon animals and rides. And hundreds of those local kids today were bussed in from around the community to take in the 2018 Shrine Circus. All the money raised from the Shrine Circus goes right back to help local families. Help the families in this area. Um, get to the Shrine Hospital in Minneapolis. So if they have children that have ailments, we have services that we can provide to them. We cover all those costs for those families. The last several years, the Shrine Circus has raised enough money to help 70 children from all over the Northwest region. Back to you guys. Well, there's a new addition to the Bismarck Zoo. Now new mothers can kick back on the breastfeeding bench. Gives moms a shaded area to feed their newborns, plus a changing table nearby. Uh, we, we certainly do support the idea of uh, breastfeeding, and so we wanted to provide a, a place for, for moms to feel comfortable doing that. So that's what we've done with our indoor facility, and now the addition of a, a special bench area here next to the waterfowl pond. Lincoln says it's all in an effort to make life easier for new moms. Speaking of zooborns, this morning at the Roosevelt Park Zoo, they received a new baby bison. It's too early for the staff to know the gender, but in the next few days that will be identified and the baby will get a name. Halberstadt's men clothing opened up on Main Street in Bismarck and Desiree's makeup and beauty lounge moved into Magnolia's old location on North 5th Street. Maddie Jelseth has this week's Main Street Minute. The sound of music will be filling the streets of Bismarck tonight. Megan Hoffman is live outside the very rainy Capitol building where school bands are getting ready to march. Megan. Molly, that's right. The excitement is building even with the rain going on. Dozens of bands from across the area are getting ready to participate in the annual band night parade. Now tonight the festivities and the music start at 630. There's a different route this year, so be aware. They're starting on 6th Street to Avenue A, then they're be going to turn on west, west onto 4th Street, and then onto Arikara Avenue. Now be aware, all of those roads will be closed while the parade is going on. We'll have a full look at the festivities for you tonight at 6 and 10. Live in Bismarck for NBC North Dakota News, I'm Megan Hoffman. Williston Public Workers hosted their annual Arbor Day celebration today, hoping everybody would be barking up the right tree. This year, the ceremony was held at the Williston Fire Station number two. Residents and city leaders got hands-on experience with Mother Nature. The event featured three fourth grade winners honoring their talents in the Arbor Day poster contest. The kids say it wasn't too difficult to come up with a creative idea and are lucky to be recognized for their hard work. It feels really good. I told my mom the day that I was finished with it, I feel like I'm gonna win, mom. And I did. I like that confidence. For their hard work, the winner will ride on a float in tomorrow's parade for Band Day in Williston. Well, the United States Postal Service is reporting nearly $1.3 billion in losses. And that's just the first quarter of this year. The agency announcing today it's taken hits from the decline in traditional mail coupled with the increased cost for retirement benefits. Two workers are dead after hitting a power line near the Ray Nixon power plant in Fountain, Colorado. The general manager says the pair were working very close to the lines. It's unclear if the men were electrocuted or killed by the fire. An autopsy is scheduled. Crews in Dallas are battling a massive mulch fire. It sparked around 2 this morning at the Living Earth Technologies campus. Dozens of fire and rescue crews have been tackling it all day. No injuries have been reported. And on the Texas Panhandle, flames are chewing through dry brush. This is called the Mallard Fire. So far, it's burned a whopping 34,000 acres. Due to extreme temperatures, strong winds, and low humidity values, crews can't get a handle on it. All right, Kevin, it seems like yeah. we're getting some fire relief with this, uh, this rain rolling through. You know what, Molly? We'll take all the rain we can get. It is untimely, though, because of the uh, band night parade, which uh, starts at 6.30 tonight in Bismarck. Chemicals from cigarettes may be lurking in rooms where no one has ever smoked. That's according to a new study from Drexel University. Scientists found nearly 30% of air particles in an empty, non-smoking classroom were linked to cigarette smoke. That's because toxins that linger on clothing and furniture and can even spread through building ventilation systems. 
The World Health Organization says it's preparing for a, quote, worst case scenario as an Ebola outbreak grows in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Two cases of Ebola have been confirmed in the latest outbreak. The WHO says vaccines will be shipped to the Congo as quickly as possible, but that it's a logistical nightmare to get them to the area because it's so remote. The biggest immediate risk is that the virus will spread to the provincial capital with a population of one million. <laughs> the Social Security Administration releasing the top names for 2017 for babies. Coming in at number five, Sophia and Logan. Number four, Isabella and James. Number three, Ava and William. Number two, Olivia and Noah. And coming in at number one for most popular baby name, Emma and Liam. Is it a good thing or a bad thing that Kevin's not on that list? Really good thing, right? <laughs> <laughs> you could, you're a true original. But I have a Logan, so oh. a son that's Logan. Oh, okay. Daughter that's Kelsey, so. All right, you're so trendy. My daughter Kelsey was supposed to be Katrina, but she was born during the whole thing with oh. Katrina, so we decided to change her name to Kelsey. That's awkward. Yeah, so looking back, I mean, it wasn't really a big deal. Yeah, but, it turns uh, out Katrina was not a popular name in 2005. No, I guess not. <laughs> and she doesn't look like a Katrina now. She looks like a Kelsey, right, yeah. being that she's 12. So right. anyway, a little interesting story, right? Here yeah. we are with our weather right now. Those stories plus sports and the forecast coming up on the Evening Report. All right, thank you, Alan, and thank you for joining us. Be sure to tune in to the Evening Report in a half an hour. Until then, NBC Nightly News is next.